Today, we are going to wrap up a series called Second Chance, okay, Second Chance. We're not necessarily wrapping it up today because it's going to take a while to have this new life that we talk about in Jesus Christ, but today we want to add, we've added two components to what do we do. So the first place we started was, we kind of started Easter with talking about that God loves us right where we are and too much to leave us there. We talked a little bit about that in baptism to say that we're only saved by God's grace alone through Jesus Christ. That God comes into our life and the truth of God can be a scary thing, right? That as God shines his light on our lives and the older we get, we realize some of us got skeletons in our closet and all kinds of things. That as we step into God's light, it can be very scary in our lives. But we also realize not only is it scary, not only is it painful sometimes, but it also reveals the love that God has that can transform our life that God loves us right where we are and too much to leave us there. But then what? After, after we receive Jesus as our Savior, then what? A- after we say, hey, I've decided to follow Jesus, what does that mean? And in this series, we wanted to give you two things that you can hold on to. There's many things. You know, if not, nothing else, being a follower of Christ is multifaceted. There's several things you got to do. But we just want to highlight two of them. The first one is what we talked about last Sunday, which was you got to be part You've got to have people in your life. Your inner circle will make you or break you. It will bless you or curse you. And if you don't have an inner circle, we want to invite you to be in some of ours, okay? Not just sit in rows, but have a small group that's around you. And tonight, our community groups are meeting right here, and we like to invite you. There's a, there's a card right at the Welcome Center, um, and you can fill out, hey, I want to come tonight, and I want to join a small group, or I want to at least see what they're about. We're all bringing dinner together. So if you don't bring dinner, you won't get to eat, okay? <laughs> because we're all bringing it, and we're going to share it together because that's what community is, okay? You, you've moved past. We're going to do everything for you, and we're going to come and see, hey, you want to be part, so be part. And, uh, and so we're going to come eat dinner together. It's absolutely awesome. We do have child care, but just let us know so we can plan for you to be here, and you get to meet our group leaders, very informal. And if you decide to, you can take the next step, and have, have a group of people that, that'll be around you. And I think it could be absolutely powerful. So that's one thing. If you missed any of those, newbranch.net is our website. You can listen to those messages. We do have CDs available in the lobby and DVDs. And, um, and, and you can go back and watch that. Today, though, we're going to cover one last area that I believe if we don't get this, we're not going to understand. We're, we're not going to have the freedom that God wants in, in our lives. Okay? I have a feeling for some of us, we want that, right? Anybody ever have frustration in your life? Anybody ever go, I just don't feel like I'm getting enough? Anybody go, hey, man, I got more, you know, I got less money than I need at the end of the week. It's like I got more, you know, bills than I do paycheck kind of thing. And, and, and what do I do with that? Or, or I just don't ever seem to have that fulfillment or I feel like I'm getting burned out. Today we want to talk about how, how, do, how do we overcome that. Jesus gives away, and today we're going to talk through that. And I have a feeling for somebody, today is going to be a God moment where he's going to unlock something in your life, the freedom that you're going to want to have in Jesus Christ. So the first thing I want to talk about is a statement, okay? And I want you to fill it in if you can, and it's this. We get to what? And, and, and here's why I want to say it. it. This might be different for everybody. When I say we get to, what I want you to think of is something exciting, kind of like Christmas morning where we go, we get to open up presents. You know what I'm saying? Something that makes you enthusiastic. Maybe you hadn't thought of this in a long time. You know, when we're younger, I had things, you know, we get to go to Chuck E. Cheese. And then you become a parent and you're kind of like, I'm so sick of Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> uh, um, we get to go to Bush Gardens or we get to what? You know, we get to fish or we get to paint. I'm sorry. Who wants to paint? <laughs> no, people like to paint, right? I mean, we get to do, right? And, and they left there, and if you saw the pictures of the people, they were so happy, right? I mean, it's like, man, that just did something for me, and it filled me up. And we get to, right? We get to eat Krispy Kreme donuts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, we get to do these things, and it fills us up. But sometimes we find that no matter what we put in this blank, that it's not so enthusiastic because it's kind of like, well, I tried that and now I'm trying the next thing. And if I get this, then I'll finally be fulfilled. And we're finding that life sometimes doesn't have the fulfillment we think it does. Sometimes even in the church world, I did this and I go to that and I do this, but I'm not having this freedom that I think that I need in my life. And today what we're going to talk about might be a little counterintuitive, but here's what I know. If you grasp it, you will be free. If you don't, you won't. And you will not be fulfilled. You will not live the fulfilled and abundant life that God wants you to have. And we have so misunderstood what God wants to do. So today we're going to look at Galatians, and we'll put this up here on the screen. You can turn with me in your Bibles, your Bible apps. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13. The Apostle Paul writes to the church at Galatia, and he says this, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. 
Now, most of us would like to have that kind of freedom in our lives. It's true. And he says, hey, you, my brothers and sisters, what he's saying is, just like we talked about with baptism, church is a family. And so when he says brothers and sisters, he don't mean necessarily biological brothers and sisters. He means those that are in the faith. So if you're here today and you're in the faith, you need to pay attention because he's talking to you. If you're not in the faith, you need to pay attention because after you hear what we talk about, you may want to come to faith in Christ. But if you've received Jesus and you received the second chance, he's saying you've been called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Can I ask you to circle something today? Circle the word serve. I don't know that I necessarily saw that in this verse before, but he's talking about the key to life. We get to serve. That's the answer. Now, that may not do it for you, right? Because some of us are looking and thinking, uh, okay, <laughs> not sure I understand that part. What he's saying is this. If you indulge, if you think it's about consuming, you're going to be miserable. If you serve, you're going to receive the freedom that God has for you. That's the way it works. Let me go on to say, he goes on to write this, verse 14. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Maybe you've heard that before, maybe you haven't, but Jesus said it constantly. Jesus was asked several times, Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? Everybody wants to know. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. Then he goes on to say, and the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the laws hang on these two. You know what he's saying there? He's saying, make sure you're careful because here's what can happen. Christianity and religion and all these things can turn into something I never intended. You think it's about a set of rules, but it matters why you do what you do just as much as what you do. That the motivation behind it is love, not just, hey, look at me, look how great I am. And he goes, look at the Pharisees, look how they turned out. And some of the meanest people we ever want to meet try to keep all the rules in the Bible. Is that true? But yet he goes, don't ever miss this. In fact, in another place, he said, a new command I give to you. What does he say? Love one another. He said, don't ever let this become about a set of rules. Those are rules not important. The rules are important. But it's equally important why we keep the rules. That it's not done to earn it. It's not done so I can look better than everybody else. But it's because we serve other people. And if you don't, what he's saying is this, you're not probably my follower. There's no probably about it. If you don't grasp this, more than likely, maybe you've said a prayer and you've received Jesus in your heart, but you're not following Jesus if you don't get this. Because in another place, you know what he says? He says, how can you say you love God who you haven't seen when you don't love man who you have? Get it? All the laws hang on these two. Love your neighbor as yourself. And he speaks, and you say, what does that got to do with serving? Because where Jesus said this, you know what he said? Somebody said, well, who is my neighbor? And he gives the story of the good Samaritan who did what? Who served another person. He's saying, if you want to unlock freedom in your life, it's found in serving for the right reason. Verse 15, if you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. If you turn, what he's saying is this, if you want freedom, serve. If you, if you want help, serve other people. If you want to be miserable, then devour everything for yourself. Consume everything for yourself because the more you get, the more you'll want. And it's Satan's greatest weapon that he wants to use against you is, I would serve, you answer this question, I would serve, but I need this first. And he's going, but you don't understand. The keys to your freedom, the keys to what you need is found on the other side of serving. And it sounds so wrong, right? Because you go, well, wait a minute, I don't have enough, so how could me serving help me get more? Because you, you got the wrong thought process when you think it's about consuming. That's what we think. By the way, we got a whole religious brand that's built off of that, right? Name it and claim it, gab it and grab it. And the reason why there's a problem with it isn't that Jesus can't do miracles. It's because we have the wrong premise going into it. And the answer to our Christian life, the answer to the freedom that God wants us to have is something we cannot miss. And it's this one statement that I want you to write it down and think about it. And it's this, we get to serve. Now, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. It's not we have to serve. And some of you guys, you're burning out and we're going to get to you in just a minute, okay? But the truth is, we get to serve. It, 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 you might not feel that way, right? But, but, but we don't have to. But just like Christmas morning, I want you to look at somebody in the room and say, we get to serve. I mean, actually say that to somebody, can you? 
Doesn't feel very good, does it? See, now I'm seeing what the problem is. See, you're not doing that. If I said, hey, we get to eat Krispy Kreme, you'd be like, whoa, yeah, right? All right, we get to fish, man. We get to, right, we get to serve. Yeah, no, I don't think so, you know? I mean, it's kind of like one of these, you know, like, yeah, it sounds nice, but I don't think that's really going to excite me until you understand, and that's what I think I have to do today. I have to let you understand what motivates why you would want to say it that way because your freedom is found right here. If you don't get this, your life will not be blessed. I can tell you that 100%. Let me explain why I say that, because I got to dispel the couple of things that if you're not careful, you're going to miss this whole thing, okay? The, the first thing is this, is we think if we can consume, if we can consume more, we, we will actually be happier. Is that true? Anybody? It's one of the reasons why we work, right? We need more stuff. We need a new phone. We need this. We need that. And you can fill in the blank for whatever it is. But if I had this, then I would finally be happy. Anybody besides me, <laughs> right? If I have a whole dozen, then I'm good, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Until next time, right? But what do we find? The more I get, the more I want, right? And how much is enough? Just a little bit more. You might not believe that, but that works on all levels. No matter how much money you get, you'll want more. Some of us like to try it. We think, hey, I'll be happy when I have more money, right? If I had a million dollars, if I had all my bills paid off, if I had, what is it for you, right? Anybody, let me ask you, because some of you are looking really religious right now, but let me tell you what I hear. I'm very frustrated. If you're frustrated today, you might want to pay attention. If you're frustrated with what you have, you might want to pay attention because you might not get what we're talking about here. I know, because I'm right in the same boat. You're going, well, you don't want to pestle. No, I'm telling you, this, most, this message preached to me, and I just want to share with you what God is doing in my life too, okay? Because I got to tell you, that's not how I feel about this. Sometimes I just feel like I've got to serve. I'm a little bit burned out on this. I'm really sick of people, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. So I'm going, hey, how does this work? And the truth is, is I think, hey, if I could have that, if I could have that vacation or I could have this boat, these are all things that are important to me. And I could, if I could have that or I could have this, then I would be happy, right? But here's what I know, and I do know this, and maybe you know it too. I've met some people that are very wealthy and very miserable. I've met some poor people that are very happy and, and, and succeed. But I want to make sure you're not misunderstanding because you might think it's a matter of how much they have. I've met rich people that are very happy too. I've met people with tens of millions of dollars that are very happy, and you go, I would be too if I had tens of millions of dollars. I've also met people that are poor that are very happy. I've met people that are poor and the most miserable people, even worse off than the people that are very wealthy, because here's what they do. They covet what the rich people have, and all they do is complain about, why doesn't God give me what they have? Does that make sense? Living in the wealthiest nation that's ever been, creature comfort-wise, we complain about what we don't have. And what I found is it's not a matter of what God gives us or what God doesn't. And this right here is going to unlock your freedom because consumerism won't. It, you, know, you know, I see with consumerism, it's got one phrase that I'd like you to pick up on, and that's this, ism. Because a lot of us have some isms. Is that right? Frenchie, tell me what that means again. Incredibly short memory. When he first said it to me, I didn't realize he was talking about an acronym. <laughs> not that fast thinking incredibly short memory. Why do I say that? Because the ism tells us, and we get bought into this idea that if I can have this, I could finally be free. And we get fixated on whatever that is, alcoholism, hmm? materialism, consumerism. If I had this, then I'll finally be free. Foodism, donutism. I don't know what, I don't know what yours is, but, but you get the idea. And, and you can fill in the blank. But if I have this, then I will. And addiction is based off of that. And the more I get, the more I need. And I'm never satisfied. And it makes me worse off than when I started. Not about how much you have. In fact, Jesus knew this principle. The rest of these verses aren't on the screen because I want you to focus on this phrase. But what I want to do is I want to share a couple verses with you that you can go back and look up on your own, okay? The first one is this. It's found in Matthew. It's Jesus talks about this. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24. You can write it down and read it later. Or you can look it up now, whatever you want to do. But if you're struggling, if you say, you know what, I'm kind of frustrated with my situation, I want you to pay attention to this verse. If you're going, you know, I don't know what God's doing, but it ain't working out too well in my life, and I don't know about this second chance, but I had it, and now I don't, and I'm kind of frustrated, then I want you to write this down, and I want you to go back and look at it. He's talking to his disciples, and I want you to know, here's kind of where they were. They were... <laughs> When they first started following Jesus, they didn't have a big crowd. Then as they followed Jesus, there was a huge crowds that came. So when they walked into cities, it was like the entire city showed up. They were like rock stars. And being close to Jesus made them very popular. And Jesus saw something and he said, yeah, I see what your problem is. See, you're thinking name it and claim it. 
That's what you're thinking. You're thinking this is about you. You're thinking that you, your joy is going to come from you being blessed by God, and that's not true. It is being blessed by God, but it's not just the material blessings of God. And he goes, I, want, I don't want you to be confused by that. So here's what he writes. Matthew 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. You know how this went over? Like a lead balloon. Before this, Peter had come to him and said, stop talking about that death stuff. And he's going, I, I see what the problem is. Peter, you don't get it. You're only interested in your concerns. Is that right, Peter? You're only interested in your concerns. You're missing the whole point of being my disciple. And I'm afraid it's going to mess you up because you think it's just about me doing little magic tricks for you so your life is better. And it is about your life being better, but not in the way you think. See, you think it's about physical blessings. And can I do that? I just did it, right? I healed you. I did this. But understand, it's just going to make you want more and more and more if that's what you're focused on. So I say, take up your cross and follow me. It means it has a price tag to it. And they all went, I don't think we want to do that, right? Any more than we want to do that. But he said, well, let me explain what it means because I can tell you guys are not tracking with what I'm saying. Verse 25, he says, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. Now he's picking up on something. It took me a long time to figure this out. What he's saying here is this. He's saying, see, the problem for you is this. You think if I get this, I'll finally be happy. But the truth is none of it lasts, does it? Because all of you that want to save your life, how many is that? Everybody, right? I mean, who wants to die unless, you're, unless something's wrong with you mentally? You won't want to die, right? You want, to, you want to strive to live, and you want to strive to live well. But he says, you're going to lose your life and everything you own. <laughs> Can I help you with something today? No matter what you do, no matter what you get, no matter how great it gets, you're going to lose every single thing that you have. I'm only pointing out the obvious that no matter how much you have, you'll die. No matter how little you have, you'll die. No matter what you do, you can't obtain it. But let me tell you what the purpose of life is. If you give it up for me and my ministry, if you live on purpose with a purpose, then you'll lose it for something that's worthwhile and it will affect you for all of eternity. In fact, he goes on to say that. What, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or can it, what can anyone give you in exchange for your soul? What's he saying? He's saying, guys, you're missing the point. But see, I think this verse goes even further. It's not just talking about in the life to come. It only shows up in the life to come to say, I was going after the wrong things. And he's saying, no, to be my follower, understand that it requires serving other people even in this life because the rest is salt water. You think you're gaining so much, but you're going to lose all of that. And once you get it, by the way, the ones that do get it, you're not going to be happy with what you get. That's what he's saying. If you need an example of that, read the book of Ecclesiastes. But just be aware, it's one of the most depressing books in all the Bible because it's a guy that got to try everything. He was the richest, wisest man who ever lived. You'll never be him, right? He slept with more women than anyone else. He's tried everything. I thought sex would do it. I thought love would do it. I thought accomplishments would do it. And he accomplished more than anyone else, King Solomon. And he gets to the end, and what does he say? It's all worthless. It's all meaningless. It's all the more I get, the less fulfilled I am. It's kind of bursting the balloon of consumerism, isn't it? And it's saying the only way you can do it is what he says, to fear God and keep his commandments. And what does Jesus say? Love your neighbor as yourself. Sounds easy, but it's not, right? Because we get wrapped up in materialism. Will I be willing to serve? It will unlock freedom in your life. We get to serve, not I have to serve. It is the keys to freedom. You see, I can tell you right now, I have seen people, because here's what I know. There's reasons why people don't serve. One is this, is some people are broken and think, God could never use me, and I'm going to wait till I'm all fixed before I serve. And can I tell you something about that? You'll never be fixed. This is one area where I feel like some of the programs do better than the church. Because here's what they teach in AA and NA and stuff that I've been reading about, and that is they teach them get serving right away. You want to get over your ism, get, get serving other people. You're not all cleaned up yet, but get serving other people, and it's going to help you. Because it's not just about you. <laughs> well, wait a minute, I've got to get all cleaned up. Some churches teach this. I've got to get all cleaned up before I can serve God. Well, let me say something. You're never going to get cleaned up because some things are only found on the other side of the servant's entrance. Some people are waiting for the perfect time. Well, I just got to get some things straight. Well, if you do, you'll never be free. You know when, you'll be, you know when everything's going to settle down? When Jesus comes back. And then he's going to look at you and say, what did you do with what I gave you? Wait a minute, I had this and I had that and I had pain. And you know, I used to make a huge mistake by saying, you know what? 
just wait till your life is better and then you can serve. We, we didn't ask you. And I think the spirit is right to say, yeah, you're suffering right now. And maybe there's things that you're not able to help serve with. But I think we've robbed people of the blessing. And some people have died prematurely because we said, because you're facing these things, you can no longer serve. And I can tell you from personal experience, I have seen people that have all, everything you could ever think of and don't serve and as miserable as can be. And I have seen people that live in conditions that you cannot imagine have faced health concerns that you cannot imagine. And some of them are going through the chemo ward and they are encouraging people. And some of them are sitting in the chemo ward and couldn't be more bitter at God. Let me ask you a question. Who do you want to be? You want to be the one, and I understand, that's very sensitive, right? I just got diagnosed with cancer. You know, some people say, I'm not, but some people have it, right? And you go, and you go, but, but, but you mean I could serve and have that? Yeah. You mean God might have wanted to use this so I serve other people that are around me? Yeah. I saw somebody that lived in a nursing home and had no family left and had no one that even came to visit them at Christmas, yet she had more friends than anyone I've ever met on this planet. Because why? Because what she did was she went around and encouraged every single person there. And I saw other people in a nursing home that shriveled up because they didn't talk to anyone, because their conditions were tough. And that's not fair, is it? And I would say, absolutely not. If I was there, in fact, I had less conditions than that, and I was miserable, and I thought, God, I can't serve you because of my pain, but if you want to be able to overcome some pain in your life and you want it to be able to feel right, I'm telling you, we get to serve. And when you serve, it will unlock freedom in your life like you can't believe. But if you're waiting for the perfect day, and if you're doing it because you don't have pain, or if you're doing it because you're not perfect and you're waiting until you're perfect, it's never going to happen. And you are going to be robbed of the greatest blessing this side of eternity. Them that give their life for me and my purpose will gain it, not only in the world to come, but right now. The joy in these people is unbelievable. It will unlock things that no amount of money will ever do because they got something that cannot be purchased. You get it? The money helps. I hope, I hope we're all wealthy. You get it? The truth of the matter is we live on the wealthiest nation that's ever been, creature comfort-wise. If you look back 100 years, I've been I, even uh, if you look back 500 years, you go to castles with kings that we live better than them. You might not believe it, but I've seen where they went to the bathroom at. You know what I'm saying? I've been to the Biltmore and saw their little bathrooms that are terrible, right? I mean, come on. And that's only 100 years. We live in such wealth you cannot even imagine. What does it take to be happy? It's not locked up in things. Don't matter how much you have, don't matter how little you have. If you have a lot, thank God. If you have a little, no problem. Because here's what I know, it's found in if you serve. If you will live a life of service, I'm gonna tell you, it will unlock freedom in your life that you cannot believe. I didn't say it, Jesus said it. And it is a key that we cannot believe. So we need to start by using the phrase, we get to serve. That's why I want you to write it down. That's the only thing I want you to write down today. Why? Because I want you to look at that every day. Hey, how am I doing with that? Are you serving people? You're not. You're going to serve people today? Well, I got this reason. I got that reason. And believe me when I tell you, the more we consume, what does it say? We devour ourselves because we start thinking of ourselves and it makes us miserable. But when we get outside of ourselves and we start serving people, it will unlock freedom in our lives. So true. It's so true. So please, please serve. The, the second thing I want to point out is a little bit different principle, and that's this. We get to serve. In, in the book of Acts, it talks about them having everything in common. In fact, I, I'll give you the reference so you can write it down. When the early church started, it, Acts chapter 2, and verse 44, it says all the believers were together and had everything in common, and they sold their prop, property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. And there was this dynamic of when you had a need, someone else came and met it for you. When somebody else had a need, it, some, somebody else met it for them. And, and so, so here's the solution to the needs that we have. Because you go, John, but wait a minute, I have needs. Yeah, I know. And they're met. See, here's what God does. You see, the problem for us is this, is that God has what everybody needs. And God will provide what you need. But the thing is, he never gave it to you. He gave it to someone else. And when you read Acts chapter 2, and you see how he set up the church, and you'll realize that's true. Where one had a need, the other one had the possessions. And our problem is on both sides of it. Some of us, God has given an abundance of something. It could be money. It could be experience. It could be love. It could be encouragement. It could be whatever gift that God has given you. And here's what the problem is. We think it's for us, and as we devour it, we become more and more miserable. But when we use it to serve other people, we fulfill what God says, and there's a synergy that happens because they have what you need, and you have what they need, and we help each other. Okay? Nobody has all of them. On the opposite side is this. God has created need in some people's lives to let other people fulfill it. Did you know that? 
that God has created a need in your life that someone else can fulfill. And when you do this, which is very classic out here, very classic with me as well, when we do this thing, I serve other people, but I don't let them serve me. We take pride in that, don't we? You know what I'm saying? I don't let my needs be known, but I'm going to sacrifice myself for everybody else, but I don't let anybody help me. Can I tell you what that is? That's called a Messiah complex. That's called a God complex. That means you think you are God because you meet all the needs and there's only one person that had all the gifts and that was Jesus Christ himself. And when he left in the book of Acts, it said he dispersed his gifts amongst the brethren. He dispersed his gifts among the body of Christ and where one person had a need, the other person could meet it. And we think it's very religious for us to say, I have a need, but I'm not going to share my need because I'm, I'm going to suffer alone. Well, you can suffer alone. But this is not me get to serve. This is we get to serve. And when you don't let someone serve you, can I tell you what happens? Can I tell you what happens? You rob them of God's blessing on their life. You rob yourself of God's blessing on your life. Some people go, well, no, I just depend on Jesus. Okay, well, let me play that out. My dad used to tell a story, and he'd say, <laughs> He'd say, there was a guy who prayed to be rescued from a flood. And, and the water started coming in his house, and he went up on top of his roof, and somebody came alongside and said, hey, they came up in a motorboat, and they said, hey, can you come down off the roof, and um, we'll help you. Now I'm waiting on God to help me. Okay? I'm going to keep praying. They're very religious. Sounds religious anyway. Then a helicopter comes, the last person, right, the Coast Guard, and they're like, dude, we're the last hope on earth. You got me? I mean, if you don't come now, you're going to get washed away and you're going to die. And he said, no, I'm going to wait on God because God's going to get me. Get it? And they fly away and the man, <laughs> the water comes and the man drowns and he goes to heaven, believe it or not. God, see, that tells you you can do dumb things and go to heaven. And, uh, and so, <laughs> so, he, so he gets to heaven and he's looking at God and he's going, God, I did pray to you. Why didn't you help me? And he said, wait a minute, I sent a boat, right? I sent a helicopter. You came here prematurely. Can I tell you something? That's where a lot of Christians are. You don't have joy in your life. You don't have what you need. You continually pray to God and think you're going to get your needs met because God's going to supernaturally just rain it down out of heaven. But most of the time, and you read in the book of Acts, and you're going to see it's met, the need is met through someone else. Now, I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about the encouragement you need. I'm talking about the accountability you need. I'm talking about everything you need is found in the, in, in the body of Christ, but he just didn't give it to you. And when you don't, let me tell you what your problem is. I'm going to just tell you. You think you are God. Whenever you think you can be a church of one, you think you are Jesus. You get it? And you're not. We are Jesus together. We are the body of Christ together. One is a hand, one is a foot, one is a colon. You get the idea, right? I mean, we all need each part of the body. Don't do that. Don't rob somebody of the blessing that God wants for them. If you didn't see that, Jesus himself taught, and we talked about this a few weeks ago, John 13, Pete, there, Jesus shows his disciples, this is what it means to be my follower, and I want you to go back and read it, because if you're struggling with this, you really need to read this. We've said it several times, but it's very important that we get it. John 13 in verse 8, Jesus is washing his apostles' feet. He comes to Peter, and Peter says, you don't wash my feet. I wash your feet. And Jesus said, Peter, if you don't let me wash your feet, you have no part with me. That's not my words, that's Jesus. Before going to the cross, before serving the Lord's Supper, he took the time to point out to Peter, if that's your way, you're not a follower of Jesus. If you keep all your needs to yourself and you never be part and you don't share them with other people, then here's what he's going to tell you. You're not a follower because you're robbing them of the blessing of helping you and you need to help other people. You're helping at the same time that you need help because you have gifts they don't, and you, you get the idea? But some of us don't know each other well enough to do that. That's why we're having a meeting tonight about community group. Because let me tell you something, the money stuff and some of the other things might be easier to share, the immediate needs, but the deep things, it's going to take a while before we share that, right? And we got to pull off our mask, and we got to get real with each other, and that's going to take, it's going to be not easy. But as we do, we're going to receive everything that God has for you and it'll be found in someone else. And by the way, we need you too, because you have something we don't, and we get to serve. Does that make sense to everybody? It's the solution to your needs too. The last person I want to talk to today is this, is I have a feeling that just like myself, there's some ministry leads here today that's going, I really appreciate this message, John, but here's the truth. I don't think I can do one more thing. <laughs> can I tell you something? When I started praying about this and I realized this is what we need to talk about, I was thinking to myself, I can't do another thing. <laughs> this church has grown to the place where I go, I can't do it all, you know? Not that I ever did. 
Because there's only, what you'd learn about me if you got to know me is I'm not good at very many things. There's only a handful of things I'm good at. You might go, I've never seen what those things are, but you get it. So, so, so I go, hey, hey, the thing is, is that I'm not good at things. So one of the reasons why I've been able to empower some people is because I just can't do some of these things. But I've reached a stage where some of the things that I'm doing, I'm not doing them very well because it's too much. And, and, and it's not we get to serve like, yay, it's I have to serve. And God, I don't think I want to do this anymore. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's where you're at. Maybe you came from another church, and the reason why you haven't plugged in is because you got so burned out. And some of my ministry leads here today, you guys are doing more than I am, and you are burned out. And when you saw this thing, you're going, thank God, because hopefully we can get some volunteers. But, but here's the problem is that some of us are going, no, but we're going to be called to more and more and more, and it is crushing us. And we got to change. But there's an answer in this. We get to serve. Jesus taught this very principle, and I'm looking to explore this together. I'll tell you what Jesus had to say. He, he looked at his apostles, and I know they were very excited about what they were about to do, but he's thinking to himself, you guys don't get what's going to happen. So, so here's what Jesus said, and you can write this down. If you're, if you're struggling with burnout today, you might need to look at this. Luke chapter 10 and verse 2, he says, He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his field. He's not talking about crops. I don't know if you guys knew that. But I don't know if you've ever looked at a project or a job or anything else and looked out and went, I can't do that. Anybody work at a place where your, job, your boss has asked you to do more than you can do? <laughs> I've worked there, right? I mean, it's like, I'm sorry, who's going to do that? I don't think it's going to be me because I can't do all that, right? I mean, I'm looking at the field. That field is huge and and we don't have the equipment to do it, and I can't do it. And so he's looking with his apostles, and he's looking at that field, and he's going, imagine if you had to do that by yourself. You can't, can you? And he's saying, so what do you need to do? You need to pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will raise up laborers. Let me ask you a question. If, you, if you've been burned out, because i got to tell you, one of the things for me is, is go, well, maybe we just quit. Right? I mean, is that what it makes you, makes you feel like? When you look at the field and you go, it's too much. God's work is too much for me. And the answer to that is, you're absolutely right, it is. It's we. And he's saying some of us have to transition into saying, will you be leaders, not just servants? Because here's what I see in our church. We have a lot of servants. I don't have to do a lot to say, do you have a servant's heart? I believe that you do. My question is, is are you willing to transfer into saying, hey, I can't do all the serving. I've got to lead some other people to do it. Because I believe this, that everything we need is right here. The problem is, is we have to organize it. We have to equip it. We have to become equippers. That's what it says in the Bible. That the pastors aren't just doers. It might have to be for a season. But we also have to equip people for works of the service. Can I tell you, take it from somebody that's not very good at very many things. When I have equipped people to do it, they've actually done it better than me. They have the ideas, they have the empowerment, and God is sending them to us, and we have to be willing to allow them to help. So please don't feel like we're going to burn out because it's not me, it's we. And if we pray to the Lord of the harvest, what we're going to look at is, is we're looking at the harvest and we're going, sometimes it, it's, I've, I've crawled under my desk, you know? And you go, the needs just in Isle of Wight County alone are more than I can bear. With tens of thousands of people that are unchurched, the burden is more than I can bear. The needs that they call me with is more than I can bear. But he says, hey, pray to the Lord of the harvest because it's a great thing the day you realize that the pastor isn't the head of the church. Praise God, right? And you're not either. And some people are going, I have a Messiah complex, but here's the problem is, is that it's not a good thing. It's the weight of the world on your shoulders thinking I have to accomplish all of it. And he's going, no, 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 pray to the Lord of the harvest because there is one head of the church and it's not you. Don't let anyone call you father. That's what Jesus said. Don't let anyone call you, upgrade you, because there's one head to the church, and it's Jesus Christ himself. And if we got together and we pray to the Lord of the harvest, he will give us everything we need to reach that harvest. So it's a great thing when we look at the vision and we realize, you know what, I can't do that. Because <laughs> he's saying, you're right, because the vision is bigger than you. And it will go beyond you. Now, i got to tell you, in order to make it happen, it means we have to change. What got us here won't get us there. We have to change what we're willing to do. And some people, that'll rub wrong, and we're going to have to be okay with that, okay? Because here's what we know. There are people that are lost and dying and going to hell, and we have to serve them to get them into the kingdom of God. And anyone that folds their arms and goes, I don't want it to grow any more than it already is, then you don't care about lost souls going to hell. And let me tell you something. Jesus said, I am about the one lost soul. That's what our church is all about, and we need your help. 
ministry leads, we're praying for you because I know some of us are burning out and we've got to empower other people to serve. We've got to get people to the table. Can I tell you something? Our teen ministry is in a season of growing, and we have got to get them not only serving and doing tasks, but we've got to get them a seat at the table so they can be a church, not in the future, but the church of the now. And now is the time. And what I see for us is God's going to take us further than we ever thought we could go because the problem for me is my dream's way too small. <laughs> it is. Your dream is way too small, and God is going to do through the generations more than we could ever think or dream or ask as he builds his church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And we get to serve. If you grasp this, God will unlock freedom in your life like you can't believe. Does that make sense? All right, so here's what I want to challenge you with today. One action step, okay? One action step. Tonight, we have a class Here we go. Two classes. One tonight, Discover Community. You need some people in your life. If you haven't signed up for it, the sign up for that is at the Welcome Center. Okay, I don't want to be confusing, but we get the forms and I've confused everybody. So, so that form is at the Welcome Center and you can sign up. Just let us know you're going to be here. We've got child care and bring food to come be part of it. On May the 21st, it's going to be at 7 o'clock, okay? So not next Sunday because it's Mother's Day, but the following Sunday, May 21st at 7 p.m., Please sign up, and you, that's in your outlines today, and you can drop that off in the, in the offering basket on the way out to say, I want to be part of Discover Serving. We're going to have all of our ministry leads here. You're going to get to meet with them, and we're going to get you some easy entry points to serving, so training wheels for serving. Well, that's not all I can do. I know. Well, you guys aren't doing everything right. I know. I want to give my ideas first. No, I don't want to hear your ideas. <laughs> okay. Sorry. If you have an idea, keep it to yourself. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. I want to see you serve first. Because we don't need more people that can talk. We need more people that can do. And when you help push the wheel, we'll listen to you. How's that? (laughs) Does that make sense? And I'm telling you, it will help you. Because some people go, I can't get my idea across. And some some people, and I just want to be real honest with the church family, because I know some people have been robbed of a blessing in their life because you got the greatest idea in the world. You know why I know? Because I did too. And I didn't get to do it because here's what I did. I said, I ain't going to do it until they do it like I want. They don't listen to me. So I went to church, to church, to church, to church, to church. And now you're here, and God has a word for you. Stop talking and start doing, and we'll listen to you. Can I tell you something else? Stop talking and start doing, and God will listen to you. Because some things are only found on the other gate of the servant entrance. And I know some of the things we're going to ask you to do are menial. I know some of the things we're going to ask you to do are hands-on. But let me say something. It's nothing that I don't do either, okay? The pastor can't clean the church. Nobody should. But I do. Okay? I clean the church too. I do all these things too. Because why? Because nobody's above any job. If you are, then you need to go back and read this stuff because I'm telling you, you're going to be robbed of the greatest blessings of your life. And then your ideas are going to come across because we're gonna, we want to listen to you. You help us push the wheel and we want to hear all of your ideas. Does that make sense? So please, 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 please sign up for these classes so you can be part. One last thing with that. Do it now. Sign up for them now. Please don't do this thing where you go, well, I'm going to have to get a few things straight in my life first before I sign up for this stuff. Some of you guys, you said that last year, and you ain't got nothing straight yet, have you? Because some things will never be unlocked until you start doing it. I'm going to get my life cleaned up, then I'll come back. I'm going to get my life straightened out, and then I'll come back. No, it's not change, and then you can follow Jesus. It's follow Jesus, and then your life will change. But you won't be able to do that unless you come be part. Does that make sense? Please sign up. Well, my schedule, I know. But if you want to unlock freedom, you're going to have to do some things you ain't never done before. If you're saying, I'm frustrated today, you need to come, okay? Trust me. If you're saying, I don't know how I'm going to get through the day, and I'm so miserable, and I'm so depressed, and I have all these things, you need to sign up so you can see what God can do. Now, I understand there's things and and obligations and maybe things that maybe would keep you. But here's what I'd like to say. Maybe you could do an act of faith today. And here's the act of faith. Not to give us money, but here's what I want to ask you to act of faith to do. Sign up for the class, and if you can't make it, call us and tell us you can't make it. But don't walk out these doors because here's what I know. Satan is going to get you with your isms. Ask me how I know. And he's going to give you every reason why you can't come because he is a roaring lion waiting to devour you. Go back and read Galatians. What does it say? If you don't serve, you will devour each other. When I say each other, you. You'll devour yourself. You know how I know? Because I've been trapped in consumerism. I've been trapped where I never allowed anybody inside my life. I've been trapped where I've been all alone. Anybody besides me? And it's the darkest place I've ever been. And if I didn't connect and I didn't get to be part and I don't get to serve, 
I probably would have just killed myself. And some of you guys are right there. Maybe you've thought about it. And you know how it does? You come, and we're going to help unlock God's freedom in your life. It's going to be absolutely awesome as we become the body of Christ together. Can we do that? And you're going to have the life you can't believe because we get to serve. Please, please, please come. It's going to be absolutely awesome. Okay? All right, let's stand for prayer.